see you. How awesome. Been? Awesome. This is my bus. It's a 1982 Prevo La Mirage. It is a big, giant, over the road bus. It used to have 49 seats in it. When I bought the bus, those had been removed. A bunch of the side windows had been removed and the bus was completely gutted. Absolutely just plywood on the floor, spraying insulation everywhere else. And that was what I got to deal with when I first bought this. So I'll show you what's in it and um, how it works. I have picked up all of my stuff. It was all secondhand. Um, it was all reused. All reused. What this is, is a 50 gallon tank that holds about uh, $180 worth of propane and a 175 gallon fresh water tank. Takes about 30 minutes to fill off a regular hose. And you can stay, uh, you can stay on your own for how long with this? Months, months. Because the other part of having fresh water is having a place to get rid of it. Well, I have, when I bought this bus, I planned on it to be a grand thing. I had lots of money back then. I thought I was gonna be able to make this fantastic. And instead, I started living in it. So when I got all these pieces, they were all for a grand life. So it's still big. 275 gallon pro, uh, black and gray tanks, a 10 gallon hot water heater that works off of electricity. It works off of the engine. So the engine heat actually heats up hot water or it works on 110 electricity. So I'm both an electric and a propane bus and I can live comfortably in any season for a month and a half before I have to go in and get refills. So those things make it all happen. 75 gallons worth of black and gray. Man, it takes a long time to fill that up. It sure is nice. All right, in the back comes the good part. When I bought this bus, it had a really bad engine in it. And I had to go through, find a new engine and put it in. We have here big old Detroit diesel. It is the big series uh, 8V92. It's 475 horsepower and 1,550 foot-pounds of torque. And I changed this in a parking lot. That was the only thing that I had available. So that was how I started my bus life. In a parking lot, and, and a, but you had the uh, help. I had one guy that helped me and he helped me with some tools that I didn't have and he helped me pull the bus and back and forth. But yeah, it took a couple weeks for us to do this in a parking lot. Now it runs great. I can do 70 on the highway all day. Up hills going 55 mostly. And uh, man, it's just, and I get 10 miles to the gallon. 10 miles? 10 miles to the gallon. That's pretty good. Yes, it makes it easy to travel. It makes it real easy to travel. When I need to have better gas mileage, I have my little car. And this one gets 35 miles to the gallon. And it's still fun. It's a great tow vehicle. As you can see again, I've got, it's a, a 78 and 75. I call them both 75 black and gray my dump stuff I had to build in cut a hole in the floor to make that work um, I carry gasoline for my gasoline generators and I have two of them because I needed to be more economical than the gallon per hour of the big 10k the little generator which I choose Ry Ryobi runs on eight hours it runs on three quarters of a gallon of gas so for five bucks this thing can run for 24 hours I use that mostly. I don't have solar, so that's my electricity when I'm camping. It's so economical and putting the money up front, this is the, the most economical thing that I've ever done, and I love it. Uh, Harley, what about these tires? I mean, did you, when do you need to change them? How much does it cost? And did you ever had a, a blowout? Yes. So. I, yes to all of that when i bought the bus it had old junky tires on it and the department of transportation says that you're allowed to keep tires on a vehicle commercially for seven years and then they have to be rotated they have to be taken out of service so when i bought the bus it had 20 year old tires on it i had to replace them 
you might think that these are so expensive and you can't do it because they're so big. These are common semi truck tires. Any truck stop can take care of me when I go and need tire work. Um, the one thing that I had to do was in order to take care of something that happened to me on the road, and I don't have a lot of money to pay for tow trucks and for tires to come out and be delivered to me. I had to change a tire. And the only way that I could do it is with this. Hang on. Because I don't have a whole lot of money, I have to have things that work and that will absolutely help me when I need help the most. Milwaukee made this tool. It's a battery powered 20 volt. It's, uh, it offers the torque power of the big one inch air torque guns that they use on semis. And I can take a wheel off and I can actually, there's tools that you can use, but even if I have a wheel off and I have a spare tire, then the, the truck tire place that comes out to change my tire can do it. But I had a blowout. I took the tire off, I strapped it on the back, tied the thing, the axle up so it wouldn't move, and I got to drive to a tire store. That probably saved me $800 from not having a tow truck come out and take care of my vehicle. So for big buses, you need muscle. And this thing has got more muscle and it deserves to be, if you have a schoolie or any kind of vehicle that uses more than just a lug wrench to get the tires off, you need this. It'll save all the time and trouble. So okay. I, I can change those tires when they blow out. Um, there, but most of the time, you just gotta get off the road. So semi tires. You can get them at any truck stop. You can get them at any, at, at most, you know, commercial tire places. So they're simple and easy. The tag tires don't get driven. The four tires in here that actually do all the work are the muscle and um, four tires that are driving. The same is when you look at a semi truck and you see them riding on the airbags. This bus has 10 airbags. It has six in the back and four in the front that help both level the bus while driving and it helps to cushion the bus. So it works great. This thing drives like a Cadillac now after years and years of tinkering with it and tightening up things and it hasn't been anything that's been too absolutely just mind boggling. It's all been simple adjustments. Tighten this up, make this work a little better, take care of this leak and I ended up with this. So I love my bus. I love being in it. I love the freedom that it's given me and I can do anything. They run for, for many, many miles, right? Millions of miles. Um, these buses were basically the, the heart and blood of Trailways and Greyhound. This was all they used. This motor was all they used in all of those kind of buses. And um, for me now, I get 10 miles to the gallon and I love it. You know, I, when I see a schoolie a short bus getting 12 miles to the gallon, I go, I'm right, I'm there. This is just as good. So I love this bus. It is big, but it's what I got. For when I first started building this, this was, if you look up here, spray and insulation from the factory. It's almost two inches thick and it's amazing. So there's no reason to change that. That was all that was done to this bus when I bought it. Empty, gutted, and that was it. Now, I have, this bus is a good record of being able to commit to building a project without a lot of money, without a, a lot of parts or skills or knowledge. I've done a little bit of everything and I did a little bit of everything in here because I built it all um, from all the electrical systems to the water to all the pieces and the cabinetry, the countertops from my old house. Cabinets are out of other coaches that had a tree fall on it. Um, the appliances came from that same coach and um, I haven't quite finished it but I am getting closer now than I ever have been and it works because it's what I got, it works great. Uh, this bus, this bus is everything that a home is because I have a regular home style refrigerator freezer. I have a four burner stove with a regular oven, microwave. I have uh, 
like a, a little mini toaster for efficiency. It doesn't use as much electricity. I can run it off the little generator. I have a full shower. I've got a washer dryer, a stackable unit in there. It works off the 10K generator. The problem with that is, is in one shot, it will use more water that it will use almost 50 gallons of water and that fills up a gray tank fast. I have a bathroom sink, bathroom sink and with a medicine it. cabinet and uh, and you know regular stuff just like home and uh, I have a full shower you know it's uh it's it's one of, it came out of another coach that had a three coat that had a tree fall on the top of it and then the pleasure palace my bedroom and the disease that I have hurts my back really bad so I have a six inch comfort uh, memory Tempur-Pedic mattress on top. I have full windows at the end of my bed. I have a 42 inch TV. And when I don't feel good and I'm in bed, this is comfort. The windows go up high enough that you can see sky at night and the view on both sides is just phenomenal. So cabinets, uh, the cabinets here, all repurposed. Everything, pretty much everything in this bus has been repurposed because I didn't have I didn't have money to go do do a build out. I had to come up with things that I could use. I had to use the things that I had laying around, and this is what I ended up with with a lot of uh, hard work and years and years of getting it together because of being frugal and not having a lot of money to spend on it. Hundred dollars a month, I could go get a couple of things and make things work, and. Um, so far this bus now is comfortable it's simple it's easy because of its size you know it's like having a big kid it it is what it is i got a big bus so it and fortunately it doesn't eat like a big bus so 10 miles to the gallon makes me happy i get almost a thousand miles per fill up okay harley so uh, tell us uh, your uh, your story my story um when i bought this bus in 2009 i was physically well i was healthy and um i had grand visions of buying an old bus refinishing it making it perfect making it nice and life changed for me <clears throat> I had a successful motorcycle shop that was tons of fun. It was a pleasure and a blast to do it. But when the economy crashed, I lost all of my people. All my customers stopped spending money because motorcycles were a second vehicle or a third vehicle. I went broke and going broke teaches you a lot of things. And one is to do, make do with what you have. So the bus went into storage. I tried to finish up working. And um, because of all the trauma that I had gone through with closing down a shop, having a heavy relationship that had crashed a few years before that, the economy crashing and having to close two businesses. And um, I ended up broke and sick. And sick, I have fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, and some other diseases and things that are all associated with that. And what it really means is that 90% of my day, I am in excruciating pain that on a bad day, I can't even get out of bed. But on a good day, and as I've started to do things better for myself, I've learned my diagnosis, I've learned my condition, and I have learned how to make deal, make do with what I have. And that also meant fixing this bus. It saved my life twice because both times I went broke and didn't have money to pay for an apartment or any other kind of shelter. I had my bus. So the first thing that I did was replace the engine. I got the bus back on the road. I got it out of storage. I started making life. I ended up in my bus with a lot of construction stuff and a lot of pieces that were unfinished. But it was all I had. And through all of that process of, of learning how to 
live in a life that was completely different from what I had known that I started making this bus work and I started going through everything got all the water working got the heat working turned made it livable and then in the last couple of years while I've been dealing with my illnesses I've slowly been able to start fixing the little things about the bus and making it better I've gone through just about everything on the bus from changing airbags to tightening up the steering and suspension parts to putting plastic trim that I found in another bus um, and was able to, to retrieve some pieces to put back on and the bus is about I would say probably 75 to 80 percent all done because everything is in its place and everything works so the bus is livable the bus has become a happy home and now it's become reliable and comfortable so it takes all of my systems are tied into efficiency the little generator makes everything work instead of laying out a couple grand for solar and for expensive batteries i have um i had five batteries five series 31 batteries for my house i had two of those batteries for starting the engine and as long as i'm not in any cold weather that's plenty so that works out good the electricity stuff uh you know that's going to be something that's going to evolve and continue to evolve because things are changing the generator is working okay it's still a little bit of work if i had solar i might not need to run the generator to charge the batteries i might only need to do something to make more power the microwave or an air conditioner for a couple hours but right now that little generator is a key to my well-being out here because it's so efficient five bucks runs that generator I've got it pumped into one of those big gas cans and it can run for three days and it's simple and it's easy a couple pulls turn it on fires right up I have regular electricity that's enough to run a microwave and to run all the charging systems and even to watch TV and um, you know today the most important thing that I can do for myself is be comfortable and this was what I ended up with and all of the pieces in this bus have there is nothing there might be a controller uh, yeah it might be a small controller on a refrigerator or the hot water heater that might be new but every single thing in here is repurposed mostly from my old life lots of stuff from another vehicle to keep it up and to keep it running and all of the wood scraps and all of the building materials have all come from other projects I've, a house was being torn down across the street i got two by fours and wall paneling and you know extra wood um, and some of that stuff is in here to build the supports um, but owning this bus has definitely changed my life because from being sick and in bed and worrying about how I'm going to proceed from having this life-changing illness that now I can focus more on living with it instead of trying to figure out how to live without it. How do I get rid of it? This is a disease that doesn't have a cure. It doesn't have a success rate of people that have been able to get cured from fibromyalgia and the people that know what it is and have relatives or friends that have experienced this is tough and you wake up and you feel like you've got the flu on the fifth day of feeling bad and being in bed and waking up and you're all sore and hurting that's like normal for me and it's life-changing i was very very active i was a hardcore rock climber climbing stuff in magazines um, i was a biker that could ride a motorcycle a thousand miles in a day and I've done that a couple of times, and I can't do that anymore. So you were you were really a full-on athlete. Full-on in almost every aspect. Winter, summer. I I moved to Colorado in uh, 1984, and I moved there to ski um, and to to pursue winter sports. And I was already qualified in ski shops so that was an easy part of life and it was fun and it was Colorado 
and Colorado has the best skiing. So that was where I started. Uh, right out of high school, I moved to Colorado. I learned to ski. I started ski racing. I got really, really good at it. And because I was in shape, I got really good at it. Um, the skiing that I did, we had a weekly race that was pro. And um, I used to make a couple hundred bucks a week skiing. And that was going out and paying the bar tab for, you know, the, for everybody that skis with you and that y'all hang out with. Yeah, free money. And, uh, and then when that all stopped, you know, I, none of it mattered. There was nothing that I could do. The equipment didn't mean anything to me anymore. It all just kind of sat aside and went to waste. And um, all of those things that I did physically to keep myself strong and tough, they all got washed away when, when, when my my world when my world dropped out from underneath me, and I closed down the businesses and had to move out of my shop that I had been in for almost 20 years, and um, those were tough psychological and physical things. And my last job, I worked on a ranch as a ranch hand and a heavy equipment mechanic, and I busted my ass and that was the end that was the last bit of juice that I had to try to make something work and when that all fell apart it was all started with my hands that I couldn't grab a wrench anymore and pull on it it hurt so bad it felt like somebody would drop a heavy cinder block on the outside of my hands on the back side and I get to I didn't have any strength I could drop a can of uh, soup I would pick it up and it's drop and I'm like what the heck's going on with my body and um, that was the that took five or six years to try to figure out that this wasn't going away. There wasn't a whole lot I could do to change it, except for everything. And I had to change everything. I changed the idea of working. I can't work anymore. I just can't do it. The little bit of things that I do, they hurt for days. But <clears throat> I I can I still have the knowledge and I still have enough finesse to be able to make something work. So if something breaks, <clears throat> I can stop, I can figure out how to get it fixed, and I can usually fix it. Somehow, long cheater bars to make me strong again, you know, different pieces, different parts, and reaching out and trying to get somebody to help me. But because of my knowledge, none of this has come at a cost to things that I couldn't do. I haven't reached a thing that I couldn't do yet. So, fixing tires, changing them on the highway to stay, you know, to, to get off the highway. And um, now what I've done is started to live with fibromyalgia and I'm starting to enjoy life again. Even though I don't feel good all the time and I go through changes like that, I can still enjoy this life and I can surely enjoy this, this van dwelling and this van life, the hashtag van life. I'm all about it. I, I love being on the road. Uh, Harley, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your uh, encounters with other nomads, how this changed your life, and then uh, also here particularly the van build, because uh, we, this is our last day uh, of the van build 2018. Uh, such a great little event and such a great little sticker to commemorate it. I feel a part of this tribe now. Um, I, I when I started building this bus, it wasn't all about YouTube and all of the creators that spend so much time making this life good. But as I got sick and started putting the bus together, that was when I found YouTube. Jamie was probably one of the first people. I reached out and contacted him. We talked about Harley Davidson's. We talked about living in Colorado. And we connected in a way that I stayed in constant contact with all of his videos. They were so much fun. And all I wanted to do last year was get here. <clears throat> and I couldn't do it. I couldn't pull it all together and make the things happen. But this year, I did. I, I got everything. It was all I did all year was that I was going to make it to this year's 2018 van build. So my entry into this van life came from watching the videos, Cheap RV Living, then Jamie's Nomadic Nomadics, Pandemonium for sure, and Nomadic Fanatic, all the guys. And that created a place 
that I thought that was where I had to go be uh, to get out and explore I've already been living comfortably in my bus so why couldn't I just do that on the road and my illness makes me anchored to a doctor I have to go see a doctor every month wherever I am constantly to, to maintain my well-being because of that I rotated out of my hometown in Aspen Colorado and as I watched the movies it was so far away to go from Aspen from my doctor and then somebody said you can move and change your Medicaid you can take what you have and start it there so that's what I've done um, I'll have a home-based doctor in California Joshua Tree the um, the other parts of Van Build and all the friends that I've made from this event have been just spectacular I can't wait to do more to hang out more with these people and this way of life it seems so simple it's not just about hanging out in Walmart waiting for them to kick you out just to get an extra day of staying there this is about living with what you have and this bus and this life how has it, it's all come to me I took one grand step Medicaid changed over easily and I reached out and found a new doctor and have a new circle to come back to in every 28 days for the doctor but in those 28 days I can go live on the road comfortably my dog has a new yard I love waking up to a different sunset every night and looking out of these windows and just going this is a good life what I'm doing now is a good life living in a van living in a bus living on the road meeting people that are like-minded and want to help other people they're giving you something to say reach out we are your people and I think that's probably the best thing that I heard reach out come out to these events because these are your people if you watch the videos and you understand how much fun these people are having and when they sit down and relax and they're really relaxed and we go to night we go to sleep at night when it's dark unless you're at Jamie's bus and then you have parties all night which are also great and campfires and you know it gives you a whole new added perspective to enjoying this well there's the bar down the street and uh, Jamie brings it with them and the campfires that we had a camaraderie because of this event so many people came here with the idea that I'm gonna take something and I'm gonna give it to you in the form of putting fans in and putting solar on top and building a complete solar system there's been vans that have been built as a donation to people that are probably like me and still struggling with a part of life that they haven't quite come to terms with and that's the part that I can tell you this wasn't easy buying this bus keeping it while I went broke coming back to have it save my life and give me the ability to make my life great again even with the illness so it's tough it's not as simple as life used to be and it's not going home and grabbing a beer out of the refrigerator and filling down and not having a worry in the world we got worries we got to worry about fuel we got to worry about water we got to worry about dumping and but at the same time we spend more time living in the moment and in this great country that has things like this for us to enjoy and um, it's here it's it's all you can I've seen people do it in the in some old Ford and old Dodge little vans that are from the 60s and I've seen people doing it in the brand new Dodge Promasters I have seen a couple schoolies that pretty much are just like this there have RV stuff in it it's all you know just laid out like a professional thing and and it, somebody built that and um, the creativity out here when you're with people that want to create when you're with people that want to do something nice when you're with people that have an expertise that they can really shine in those people excelled here those people gave so 
much time, energy, and professionalism. Um, the van that they built and they gave away, impressive. Really, really impressive. And I saw, I had to talk to a lady. I was able to do a bunch of handiwork for a couple of emergencies. There was a starter on a motorcycle. There was a car that the shock tower blew through the rusted out part of the car and we had to fix that. And I had a couple of jobs and a couple of ladies that came by quite didn't understand their, how their RV controls worked and we figured that out and helped. It was so much helping and so much giving. And I came here thinking that I was the one that needed to get that. I needed help. That's as I got here, I was like, well, man, I just, I need help to finish this or to finish that or try to make this thing work or try to figure out a way that my generator would take over for solar and all of these new things that I've learned and that I keep on watching on TV and the way that people talk with their things that are efficient and that work, I thought that I needed to come here and get that. I thought I needed somebody to do something for me because my body hurt and it took a lot of energy to get here. <clears throat> Out of the 16 days that we spent here at the van build, I spent eight of them working on other people's things, whether it was a big job, uh, some kind of car thing, um, some kind of whatever. But I was doing things that weren't my own, that weren't for me, that weren't going to do anything in my life. And I came here and gave. And man, does that make you feel like you're part of the tribe? You know, people came up to me and says, every time I turn around, you were busy. There's people talking to you, finding out, making, you know, plans on how to get this fixed or that fixed or how to do something. And um, I actually I felt I had it. it I, I was, and it felt so good to give. When I came here thinking that that was all for me, I came to a place and had so much to give. And boy, that, that gave me life. That gave me a lot of life. Awesome. Thanks, Harley. It was uh, great chatting with you. Awesome. I'm uh, happy to, sh to share my story. And for you all, come on out here and do this. This stuff is awesome. It's just awesome. You'll always find people that are different, that have a different story, that have had a different path to get here. And, but all of those stories, if there's one thing that they all do, we all just want to live. We all want to make something that out of whatever we have, whether it's a junky old bus or a beat up old van or a brand new ProMaster, we all want to make this happen. And man, this is great. I'm so thankful to be here and come out 2019 van build. It's going to get big.